Mr. Rivers, hello, welcome back to the channel, baby. Oh, I got a big video for you today. So we're going to be talking about bio nano genomics today. The magic and wonder that is bingo. So today we're going to be focusing on prenatal testing. One day this could pose a huge revenue stream for bio nano genomics, especially if prenatal screening and newborn screening gets built into guidelines around the world. Before we begin, I just want to say I'm so overwhelmed by your support. I almost done a backflip yesterday. Thank you so much for your generous donations, every single one of you. Thank you so much for all the love and the support. Thank you for always liking my videos. It really means the world to me and you don't know how excited and happy I get every time people appreciate my videos. If you're able to support the channel, you can click the join button above my head if you'd like to send a donation i've got a paypal link in my description box below but if you're unable to just you hitting a like and dropping me a comment means the world to me i love every single one of you thank you so much for supporting the channel and please remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only okay bio nano genomics 251 institutional owners now 30% institutional shares and according to fintel's accumulation score they're 96.51 they're in the top 300 out of 21,000 companies and this is indicating the highest levels of institutional accumulation you can see we have a world-class team and a world-class board of directors but recently what's caught my interest is actually how genomics is changing the practice of prenatal testing and how useful people are finding optical mapping. So people are utilizing optical genome mapping alongside some other techniques and they're finding it super useful in the detection of structural variations. In the UK, their chosen technique is gonna be whole genome sequencing. The National Screening Committee in the UK is celebrating 25 years of recommendations on population screening. Recently, they hosted the largest ever public dialogue talk of whole genome sequencing in newborn screening. They've also been working together with four chief medical officers to develop new terms of reference that embrace targeted screening in addition to population screening. So will we get to a point in time where whole genome sequencing is going to be utilized in the UK to screen all newborns and will we see lots of prenatal testing? After all, this technique whole genome sequencing still misses a lot of structural variants. Now one of the most exciting articles I've been looking at, there's two exciting articles. This one is talking about optical genome mapping being used for the detection of structural and copy number variations for prenatal genome analysis. And so we have these governing bodies, we have these global medical associations ACOG, ISUOG and ACMG and they are recommending diagnostic prenatal testing because they want to be able to detect and prevent genetic disorders for the detection and prevention of genetic disorders. They have all these traditional cytogenetic methods such as karyotyping, such as FISH, such as CMA and they're saying these are utilized worldwide to diagnose common syndromes. However, they have their limitations. And right now there is this need of revolutionary technology that can be used to alleviate using multiple technologies. In comes optical genome mapping, and this is a novel technology that can fill this void by detecting all classes of structural variations, including copy number variants. So right now they're saying the optical genome mapping is being adopted by laboratories around the world, and they're using it for postnatal genetic disorders and blood cancers. However, they state that this common Commentary highlights the potential of optical genome mapping to become standard of care in prenatal genetic testing because it has the ability to identify large balanced and unbalanced structural variations. Furthermore, they end by saying that accurate detection of all types of genetic disorders by optical genome mapping is key to reducing the global burden of genetic disorders. And so when we're talking about these governing bodies or these global medical associations, who are they? ACOG is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. ISUOG is the International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology. And this is actually a professional membership association with 13,000 members and it's registered in England and Wales, and ACMG, the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. So with these guys strongly recommending that we have this diagnostic prenatal testing so we can detect and prevent genetic disorders. And the people that wrote this article, Alka Chaudbe, Alex Hasti, Ravindra Kohi from Augusta University, Haik Bar Segyan, based over at the University of Washington, and Nikhil Sahajpal at the Department of Pathology at Augusta University. But wait a minute, Miguel, half of them are bio-nanogenomics employees. Well, Messenger of Moistville over on StockTwits, uh, make sure you go and follow him. This guy always has gems of information. I think he has like 1,000 followers now. He shared this article right here. This is a nature publication. It's about the application of FGA, which is full genome analysis, and they're using this to diagnose rare monogenic disorders. The authors are from different universities and institutions, University of California, Children's Hospital Oakland Research Institute. So if this article is stating that the current approach is to diagnosis of monogenic conditions, monogenic conditions or disorders are caused by a variation in a single gene 
they're typically characterized by their striking familial inheritance patterns. Examples include sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, Huntington's disease, and even Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Apparently, the most common monogenic disorder is familial hypercholesterolemia. This is the most common monogenic disorder in humans. Apparently, it's caused by a gene that's passed down from either one or both parents, and people who have this condition are usually born with it. So this kind of genetic defect prevents the body from ridding itself of a type of cholesterol that can build up in your arteries and cause heart disease. So that was some quick facts about monogenic disorders, but if we take a look here, the current way that they use short read sequencing to try and find these monogenic conditions, the current yield is about 26 to 40%. So they leave many cases unresolved. So within this article, they're stating that the diagnostic failures using short read sequencing stem from two places. Number one is short read sequencing doesn't complete representation of the genome. For example, exome sequencing does not detect the majority of structural variations. It can't create chromosomal maps. It misses variants in exons that are not captured efficiently, and it rarely detects repeats. Even whole genome sequencing, so it can improve the yield by 9% in comparison to exome sequencing, but still it cannot detect all structural variants, especially duplications, inversions, and translocations. In steps long range technology and bio nanogenomics. However, remember this uh, GeekWire article as a metric, 75% of structural variants that are present in that person's genome are missed by whole genome sequencing. And this was an email sent by Ivan Ekla from the University of Washington to GeekWire. So now that being said, they're saying that newly developed long DNA sequencing and mapping technologies can help solve the problem of incomplete genome analysis. So they're doing this thing that they call, this approach is called full genome analysis. So it's combining link read sequencing technology to optical mapping. And in this experiment, they were using link read sequencing from 10x genomics and optical mapping was from BioNano. They were even using the old tech, so they were using the BioNano Iris and Sapphire platforms. And this was to produce the de novo assemblies and identify structural variants and rearrangements. So remember, if England is currently going to use whole genome sequencing on newborn screening and it misses 75% of structural variants, in Cytopia, structural variants have nowhere to hide. With that study, we just looked at these monogenic disorders. There's 5,000 to 8,000 monogenic diseases. They often manifest in childhood. They can lead to morbidity and sometimes premature death. And Hankow, the founder of BioNanogenomics, said that structural variations are important. They're just like point mutations, but they underexplored this class, not because they're less important. In fact, they impact a lot more bases. So if you compare it to land, they're saying that it's more like landslides or tectonic activity. And a point mutation is a bit like a pothole or a crack in the roads. They were only not explored because of long range technology. There wasn't proper long range technology tools. So with optical mapping, you know, bionanogenomic sapphire, it's being needed to diagnose rare monogenic disorders and it helps you increase your yield. It helps you diagnose and find more cases. It's being used alongside, you know, linked read sequencing for full genome analysis. And this full genome analysis identifies structural variants and small variants and it has a diagnostic yield of 40%. And in the ones that were found to be negative before, they actually detected 35%. So the previous exome negative cases, they actually found out, hold on a minute, there is something wrong here. And we can see that four of them were actually structural variants. They detected and mapped structural variants that were missed by short reads. So overall, if they're using full genome analysis, they're able to identify structural variants and small variants and get a better diagnostic yield. They're stating that their study suggests that genomes produced from technologies like full genome analysis can improve variant detection and provide higher resolution genome maps for future application. What is this future application that they're talking about? Also, they are detecting and mapping structural variants that are missed by short reads. And with global medical associations recommending diagnostic prenatal testing, if they want to test properly and they want to make sure that they can diagnose and get the best yields, they're going to have to use optical genome mapping alongside these other long range technologies. And that's so they can detect and prevent genetic disorders. There's going to be a big market here. And if you can see that that, you know whole genome sequencing is going to miss these structural variants in England and they need to make sure that they actually see those structural variants because they're of key importance then optical genome mapping may be utilized alongside all these other long-range technologies in order to make sure they can get diagnosis after all if you're not diagnosed you'll never know you'll never be able to receive treatment and also some of these um, genetic disorders can actually lower your life expectancy some people will only live an approximately 15 to 30 years. So in the future, we can probably create drugs or we can probably create treatments or maybe genetic editing that is going to be able to help us edit out this disease. And will optical genome mapping play an important part 
in that future. So we have all these different industries. We have the cancer industry, we have prenatals, we have even newborn screening and postnatals. We can even be used in agriculture and discovery. So within cancer, we can also be used for precision medicine. There's literally so much to look forward to. I'm excited and I cannot wait to see how this business develops. I wanna keep accumulating shares every single week if I can. Some of you guys are sitting on hundreds of thousands and millions of shares. How do you feel about bio nanogenomics? How do you feel about the company? What do you think of the future? How do you guys feel about bio nanogenomics in all of these different markets? There are also applications that have not even been developed yet because they're just exploring now. As more people adopt the Sapphire as well, they're gonna explore, they're gonna research and they're gonna find more applications for this machine. As always, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you wanna drop some donations, I have a PayPal link in my description box below. But if you are unable to, just you hitting like and clicking subscribe means the world to me. Thank you so much for your love and support. Tell me what you think of the video and drop me some comments below. And I will catch you in the next video, baby. Mr. Investalot, over and out, baby.